Everything is plugged in. I'm going to have this problem where it keeps going on. But everybody on your shift and everybody on the next shift and everybody every day needs to be on the same page with this. If someone develops a pressure also in the hospital and it costs, you know, $100,000 to heal it, which is not excessive, by the way, it very easily could run up that high. Um, Medicare is not going to pay that bill because they say, if you had properly assessed and built a plan of care to protect this patient, they wouldn't have developed this pressure ulcer. So it's really important for a couple, for a lot of reasons. So you do your teaching that they need to move as much as, as often as they can if they're able to retain that. Work with the family to make sure the family understands how important it is. Um, Give them a lot of positive feedback and encouragement for their efforts, and then evaluate how they're doing. And I know that we've covered this before with ischemia and reactive hyperemia. Um, the, the reactive hyperemia, if someone's lying on their, um, you know, their back for two hours, you expect their heels to be there. But when you turn them over on their side after less than three fourths of that time is 90 minutes. After 90 minutes, those heels should not be red any longer. If they're still red, then tissue damage, underlying damage has occurred. And people say it takes more than two hours to develop um, the pressure ulcer. No, it definitely does not. Um, some people who have very poor nutrition, very thin skin, who are just uh, debilitated, can develop something um, in that amount of time. Okay. So you said with pressure, well, how did you state it compared to that slide? Sorry, I just like, on there it said when pressure is relieved, it reddens. Right? No, it said when it stays red, tissue damage has occurred. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You want it to blanch. So you want it to come okay. That makes sense. Just make sure it's not yeah. very well. And you want it to go away within, I said, three-fourths of the time uh, the blood flow is compromised. So if they were laying on their back for two hours, the blood flow was compromised for the heels for two hours, uh, within 90 minutes, it should return to its normal color on its own, really, once you take the pressure off. So we talked a little bit about friction, pulling people across wrinkled sheets can abrade the skin, that friction. Uh, when they slide down in bed and the top layers of the skin are stuck to the bedding, while the lower layers slide downward, so it's like the outside of the skin um, stay, slides down with the bedding, the, the underneath the skin may stay upward somewhat. That's Shearing. Um, and that's, I always think of friction as dragging them across the sheet. And ten, that happens a lot of times when one person tries to lift and turn someone when they really need to. I can't usually pick someone up without dragging them across the sheet. So that's wrong for me to do that. I need to go get someone else and have us count to three, lift, and have no friction to and then we know about moisture and people who are unaware of the need to move or, or can't do it. Staging, we've gone through this before and it's all the same really, except that last bullet about the suspected deep tissue injury. Uh, it can be a maroon or purple type of blister. 
this area on the skin or a blister. Um, and I don't remember, do we have a good picture of that in our book? In whatever chapter that was before, it had a pretty good visual of it. You can uh, YouTube it probably and find some pretty good ones. Okay. So this is where we talk about that Medicare and many other third party payers like insurance companies are not going to reimburse the hospital for pressure ulcers that get worse in the hospital or that occur in the hospital. That's why a lot of nearly everyone takes pictures now and documents, you know. That's one time you pretty much have to see every part of your patient at admission to make sure uh, if they are coming from they're pretty debilitated, they're coming from a home or facility, you better make sure that you have doc you know, really ironclad documentation of what condition their skin is. Keeping them clean, using skin barrier cream if they tend to be incontinent. Um, you want wound cultures to find out if there's infection present. Uh, of course, that's something you ask your physician if you could do a wound culture. A lot of times they're on specialty mattresses, have elbow and skin protectors, there's a lot of things you try to do to prevent any development. Of course, changing position every two hours some, t some facilities have a schedule posted on the wall of when they last turned that patient. So when you walk in the room, uh, you know when they were turned last and you can glance at the clock and see if it's time to do it again. You know, if it's 15 minutes, they've been in this position an hour and 45 minutes, you might as well go start looking for someone, turn on your light, get some help, have someone help you turn them while you're there. Um, and then if they have a pressure injury, you do need some moisture on that, uh, we should call it pressure ulcer, I'm not going to say that, but I know not to, on that site to promote some healing. Just, uh, you know, the right kind of moisture, something like um, sterile water or a dressing that has some moisture built into it. And then the, taking care of their nutrition as well as you can. Uh, protein, vitamins, hydration. Um, one of our patients that we were working with in the last couple of weeks was a man, I think in his late 50s, he might have been 60, but he had an esophageal cancer and it was hard for him to eat. So he was supposed to start chemotherapy, but chemotherapy um, is also pretty hard on your nutritional status. The client he was going to have was going to probably cause him to not have much appetite, maybe have some nausea. Um, probably was not going to hold up well with chemo if they didn't get his protein stores up a little higher before they started. So they kept delaying uh, chemo trying to get him uh, his albumin levels to come up and his um, H and H. So he was actually um, in the hospital for other, for pain control as well and symptom management. But the big focus was trying to build up his nutrition so he could tolerate. Ignore this last bullet because we're going to talk about that in the next chapter. Uh, the muscle relaxants, they're not prescribed very often, as often as they used to be. A lot of times when you see it, it's maybe someone who just had a big orthopedic surgery or, um, you know, a trauma, and they're giving the muscle relaxants because they do have some muscle spasms or they're giving some muscle relaxants so that they can help, they can get by with lower doses of opioids. Um, sometimes you see them used in conjunction when they're trying to wean that person off of opioids. But muscle relaxants are addictive also. And they also cause their central nervous system acting. So they cause some of the same side effects of maybe sedation, drowsiness, dizziness. So, and they're also to be short term. 
much like opioids. Um, they're not as I guess they're the lesser of two evils, but um, I used to see them order a lot of meat patients, and I don't see it nearly as often as I used to, maybe because of the dogs, and maybe because, um, but what we see a lot of times now is they're alternating NSAIDs with the opioid, and the, it used to be more, they were alternating uh, muscle relaxants and opioids. Maybe they give the muscle relaxant and the NSAID at the same time, and then the next time they give the opioids. But you're seeing less uh, muscle relaxants. To me, I've, I've noticed that in acute care. I know you just talked about uh, these drugs, you talked about opioids, you talked about uh, seed medicine uh, in the same lecture. So, a lot of this, and don't, like I said, that last bullet, we're going to talk about that in the next chapter. So, why don't you take a, let's say, my clock says it's 1.23, so um, at 1.30, come back in, and we'll do our activity, and then we'll do our next chapter.